don't know who I'm talking to today, but I need about five people and I'll make six that can say my testimony is the only reason I'm here today is because God has kept me. I should have been cuckoo from Cocoa Puss, but God kept me. I could have been outdoors with no food and no clothes, but God kept me. I should have died in the car accident, but God kept me. Is there anybody in here that can say thank God that he kept me? I want to call your attention to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. If you've been paying attention by now, you know that the response of reading is going to be the sermonic text. I, we do that because I want you to become married to the text. And that you spend time thinking about it, pondering on it, even as the week goes on. 1 Peter chapter 5 from the English standard verse, beginning at verse number 6, says, Humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that the proper time he may exalt you. Casting all your anxiety, I like King James says, cares on him. Because he cares for you. Be sober minded. Be watchful. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion. Seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Firm in your faith. Knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while. The God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, the time we have gathered today to talk, I want to talk from this thought today. What do you do? When stressful seasons come, what do you do when stressful seasons come? I know a family that my wife and I have been praying for whose six-year-old son has been battling a rare form of cancer with a tumor on his brain, and doctors have told the family there's nothing else medically that can be done. I have a high school teammate who calls me routinely, who's two years older than me, but when we played football together, he took me under his wing, mentored me on the field. He was called what we call in Georgia a three-year all-region player along the defensive line. One of the strongest individuals I ever had the opportunity to meet, even to this day, he looks like he could put on shoulder pads lace up cliques. But over the last two years, he suffered three strokes, leaving him in his own words to me last week in conversation, bruh, I just feel helpless. Just Friday in Montgomery, Alabama, sat in a room at a pastor's summit and heard pastors share and testify about their ministerial and pastoral journey. And one pastor shared about the hurt and heartbreak that he's currently experiencing. He's been at this church a while and he's led them as he thought that God was leading him to lead them. And there is a small group now that has become disruptive. So disruptive that now when he stands up to preach on Sunday, they stand up and turn their backs toward him. And even just a few weeks ago, one tried to physically assault his wife and as we gathered around to pray for him he said these words this is not what I signed up for I'm thinking about resigning and I'm thinking about not even preaching anymore beloved I'm willing to guarantee greater thank you that there are some witnesses in the building and in the virtual space who know about stressful seasons and times in your life there's some of you like me who know something about when those stressful seasons come and they seem sometimes to be compounded. 
that it continues to add up, continues to be so heavy that you literally don't know what to do. I think all of us in here maybe have a story or a testimony that you may have gone through what I like to call a Job experience. You know Job, don't you? In chapter 1, there's this phrase that continues to be repeated about how his crisis were, was compounded. Chapter 1, verse 16, there's this phrase that says, while he was yet speaking, this happened. Verse 17, while he was yet speaking, this happened. Verse 18, while he was yet speaking, this happened. And then you fast forward to chapter number 2, his health now begins to fall apart. Somebody has their own personal Job experience and greater thankful this morning. Where you had issue after issue. You've had problem after problem. You've had challenge after challenge. You've had heartbreak after heartbreak. And it seems as it comes so much that your middle name has become heartbreak. It's a series of stress and suffering. And now you come to a place in life where the anxieties and the worries of life sometimes seem to be too much. Burdens are too much for you and I to bear. Yet we are a people of faith. And I'm not, not talking to you super saints these holy folks who come into church on Sunday, you never have any struggle or strain. We're glad that you're here, but I didn't come to preach to you today. But I'm looking for a witness up in here who come to church every Sunday. You pay your tithes and offering. You worship God. You read your word. You pray every day. But sometimes it's hard and it seems like folk that don't trust God never have any trouble. But there's another crowd of us in here who are servants and worshipers of God. It seems like when all hell breaks loose in your life, when life becomes too stressful, you are left with the balancing act and now the troubles of your life have become so compounded you don't understand how you can keep going on. Sometimes life stresses, Brother Marcus, will exceed your spiritual weight capacity. How do you handle it? What do you do when stressful seasons seemingly overtake or overwhelm our lives? Can I call a witness to the witness stand? Beloved, because I believe life is so unpredictable at times that I believe what that movie cinema prophet by the name of Forrest Gump said was prophetic and correct. He said that life is like a box of chocolates. You never know. Y'all going to help me here, isn't it? Because if, when, it's, it's not if, you, or it's not when you have trouble. It's not if you have trouble, but it's more when you're going to have trouble. You, you, you can come to Bible study. You can serve in the church. It's not if, but it's when. When is a homily. When is not hyperbole. When is not metaphorically. When is not figuratively. When is not hypothetically. When is not about possibility. When is not about probability. But when, my brothers and sisters, is literally. Church, it doesn't matter who you are, no matter what side of the tracks you come from, all of us will have some stressful seasons because Job says, man or woman, born of a woman, that his days are few, and those days are filled with trouble. Uh, so how is it? How are you going to get relief, Pastor? How are you going to release from the stress and, re and, and, and anxiety? I, I got a simple solution today. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 through 11. We find Peter reminds us that we have a God who doesn't want to share our burdens, but we have a God that wants to bear our burdens. He doesn't just want to keep, keep up with you, but he, he don't want to keep them from you, but he wants to take them away from you. Life can sometimes seem too much. The stress that someone is dealing with has you feeling like you just want to tell God to stop the roller coaster. 
and you come in this place this morning, and if you heard nothing else I said, do know that you are going to have to deal with the stresses in your life. Because somebody has stress on the job. Somebody got financial stresses. Somebody has children stresses. Somebody has marital stresses. Some have family stresses. And matter of fact, some of you stressed out right now. The babies were singing and you were sitting here stressed out. Couldn't say amen. Couldn't say hallelujah. Couldn't clap your hands. You're coming in here. We're looking like you're all that with a bag of chips on the side and a Coke when really your Coke is flat and your chips are stale because you're stressed out. And can I tell you today that stress will kill you? Our Samonic Spotlight shines on 1 Peter chapter 5. Beginning at verse 6 through 11, that's what's going on in this text before us. Peter writes from a worn place of a pastor's heart. He writes to these new converts who are going through trial and tribulation. The Bible tells us that the Emperor Nero, around 80, 64 AD, is now under political pressure. He wanted to rebuild the city of Rome, and so he burned it down and blamed it on this new movement called the Followers of the Way, or what is called as Christians. He blames this on them, and so now the Romans have turned on them, and now they are killing Christians and burning them and using their bodily remains to light the city. They're being persecuted. And Peter tells these believers who have this courageous Christianity, he says, let me give you some words that you can stand on, that you can hold on to when all hell breaks loose in your life. Peter knows that these new believers are in a place where they're being persecuted for their faith, and now they're at a point in their lives where they're wondering, and here is the question, what in the world is God up to? Can I put a quote in the meeting park right there? Because there's sometimes all of us yeah. in our own trial and tribulation yeah. will ask God, God, what's really going on? Help me oh, preach. Yeah. Because if you're real with yourself sometimes, we all ask the question, God, what's going on? I thought I had a witness in here this morning. Yes, that you can trust God, but there's times in your life that you sometimes wonder, God, why do I got to go through this? Yeah. Matter of fact, when you get to chapter 4 of 1 Peter, he's going to tell, Peter's going to say in verse 12, do not be surprised. I need some Bible readers right here. He says, don't be surprised concerning the fiery trial when it comes to you to test you as though some strange things were happening. Greater thankful sometimes we give the devil or we give more CNN coverage to the devil than we do to the divine. Um, some, sometimes our stresses ain't always demonic. Sometimes we bring stresses into, on, onto ourselves. Some, some things we've done to ourselves that have now caused consequences for us to be stressed out. And I want to tell you today that God says that when he comes in your life, when these things happen to you, when God allows these things to happen to you, it's not to hurt you, it's not to destroy you, but it's always to develop you. Uh, Pastor H.B. Charles, pastor of the Shiloh Metropolitan Church, Jacksonville, Florida, says this, in life things happen to you that you cannot control. But you can control how you respond when things happen to you. And Peter says to these new converts, I know you can't control being persecuted, but you can you can control your response. And Peter says, I want to give you some strong words that you can stand on in stressful seasons. And here's the thesis of my whole message today, that when we respond to stressful conditions in a Christian manner, we can be assured that the God of grace will sustain us. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I need about five people and I'll make six that can say my testimony is the only reason I'm here today is because God has kept me. I should have been cuckoo for Cocoa Puss, but God kept me. I could have been outdoors with no food and no clothes, but God kept me. I should have died in the car accident, but God kept me. Is there anybody in here that can say thank God that he kept me? Let me walk around the text. Let me walk around the text. 
I'm going to lift four things into your hearing, and I'll do something for you that the devil's never done. I'll leave you alone. Here it is. <laughs> Here it is, number one. If you're going, what you need to do when stressful seasons come, number one, verse six tells us you got to resist arrogance. Yeah. Peter says, don't run past, don't close your Bible. Peter says, huh, humble yeah. yourselves. Bring yourself down. Don't, don't, don't walk around prideful and pompous. Come a little close. Peter says, I need you to humble yourself. Watch this. Under the mighty hand of God. Can I, can I work right here? That, that, that word humble in the original language literally means to be self-subjective. It means to lower oneself. It means to, to lie down. Here's the reality, church. Lean in. Sometimes we struggling with what God is doing and why God is doing and what God is, does. And it's called some of you, if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes to be angry with God. And because sometimes we get angry with God, we begin to flex up at God. I wish I had some help here. We not only, it's okay to question God. Let me, let me dispel that myth. You can question God. But what I, may, I, may I tell you from someone who questioned God, be ready for God's answer. But sometimes people get angry with God and we become uh, arrogant towards God. And, and we start trying to go against God and hear what God says. Humble yourselves. Watch this church. You, you, you got to, he says, lie down somewhere. You got to subject yourself. Can, can I, can I, I was talking to, my, to, to one of my preaching pals. Every preacher needs preaching pals to talk through scripture. And so uh, one of mine is my dear friend, Pastor Carlos Williams, pastor of the Pilgrim Rest Church in Dallas, Texas. And we were talking, and, I, and he said, Saul, you, what you got to know is that your place of peace is your place of surrender. Okay. Let, let me try that one more time. If you want peace in the midst of your stress, your place of peace is your place of surrender. In other words, if you want peace from God, you got to learn to surrender to God. And it's only when you find that place where you surrender totally to God that God is able to now help you get through that situation. I know you don't like the fact that it's cancer. I know you don't like the fact that you got marital problems. I know you don't like the fact that your credit is crippled. Your change is strange. I know you don't like the fact, but sometimes you just got to lie down in that and surrender to God and Here's what you will find out. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, and I am the clay. Mold me and make me thy will while I'm waiting. Yield and still. Have thine own way. You got, you got to lie down. Can I give you another place to shout? He, he said, don't just lie down anywhere. But lie down huh, under... The mighty hand of God. I, I, I know you're stressed out. But if you're under God's hand. It'll work itself out. I, I, I know you're under the weight of death. But if you're under God's hand. God will turn things around. I know, that, I know you're under all these issues. But don't ever forget that you're still under the hand of God. And here's the good news. I may be dealing with some stuff, but at least I can thank God in the midst of it because God got his hand over the situation, under the situation, and all around the situation. And is there anybody in greater thankful this morning who can thank God I have some stuff that I don't know how I'm going to make it, but thanks be to God, his hand is on the situation, under the situation, and all around the situation. I, I discovered some of us can't be humble because we think we know more than God. Is this on? I mean, I've been doing this for 40 years, God said, but I created this. Who are you to tell the one who created how to handle your situation? Dr. Robert Smith. Professor, retired professor now, Christian preaching at Beeson Divinity School at Stanford University, writes a book entitled Doctrine and Dances. He says the problem is that sometimes, or he asks a question, how far can God lift us before he loses us? 
some of us get blessed and we forget where we come from. Can I ask a question today? Can your attitude handle the at altitude? Not only must you resist arrogance, I got to hold her. But secondly, you got to rely on the Almighty. Verse 7, don't close your Bible. King James, I like, I like verse 7 this way. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. This, this, this word cast literally means in the Greek language to throw or to hurl. To throw or to hurl. To throw or to hurl. Now, I, I've discovered already we've got a lot of football fans that are very thankful. And, and no matter what team that you uh, cheer for, whether it's the eagle down there on the plains, that's, I don't know if they're eagle or tiger, depending on the day of the week, or the washing powder or the elephant in tea town or a proud Georgia <coughs> bulldog like myself. No, no, no matter what team you pull for, the object of the game is to outscore your opponent. And no matter if you run the ball at some point in today's football, at some point you got to be able to pass the ball. And so um, you got to have um, not only a pretty decent quarterback, but you got to have some really good receivers. Quarterback can only throw the ball, but you got to have somebody who can. Peter says those problems, them stresses that you have, throw those to Jesus because he's a pretty good receiver and he'll catch whatever you have. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but is there anybody through some heartache, you through some pain, you through some bills, you through some sickness to Jesus, and everything you threw to Jesus, he was able to catch it. Cast your cares upon him. Because he cares for you. This, this, this word cares literally means in the Greek language. It's the metaphorical picture to be pulled apart. It's the metaphorical picture of a pair of pants or a shirt being pulled in two directions. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I believe there's somebody came into the sanctuary that they pulled in two directions. You got some problems that you came into the sanctuary thinking about, pondering about. You got some stuff that's due by Friday. You don't know how you're going to make it. Somebody came in here pulled in two directions. And Peter says those very things that you are pulled in, give those things to Jesus and watch Jesus handle those things. Matter of fact, that's what salvation was all about. We were pulled in two directions. And Jesus stepped right in and he was able to give us salvation. And I don't know who I'm talking to today but there got to be somebody here or in the virtual space that can say that I've learned that when I turned it over to Jesus he can work it out tell somebody he cares for me because sometimes stress will get you where you don't even care for yourself but aren't you glad your God my God our God still cares for us even when we don't care for ourselves uh, I'm going to stop right there but not only must you resist arrogance, not only must you rely on the Almighty, but here's the third one. He says you got to resist the adversary. Verse number eight. I'm, I'm just walking the text. Verse number eight. Peter says, don't underestimate your opponent. He, he begins to speak metaphorically again. He, he, he speaks of, Peter begins to speak and says, Satan is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's our adversary. I mean, he's anti the body of Christ. This is why it's important that you come to church. This is why it's important you come to the teaching arms of the church. Because your music ain't just going to make Satan flee. Hell can break loose in your life and you can turn on gospel. He's going to sing right down along with you. Because you do know he was the praise and worship leader. But the word tells us that when you, get, when you go at him with the word, he has to flee. Look what Peter says. He said he's like a roaring lion. Wait, wait, Peter. He says, I, I ought to stand. And you say this brother is like a roaring lion. Here's a couple things you got to understand. He says, this, this lion, uh, uh, the metaphorically speaking, uh, you got to understand it's anatomy. It's a large animal. You got to understand it's, its attitude. It's called the king of the jungle. Every now and then it roars to let everyone else to be, uh, know to be afraid of it. Not only must you know its attitude and its anatomy, but you got to know its appetite. He says he goes to and fro. 
seeking whom he may devour. But then Peter says, don't run. Don't run. Stand firm. Wait, bro, you told me he like a lion. <laughs> and you telling me to stand firm? He says, but stand firm on the word of God. And when I stand firm on the word of God, Deacon Christian, last time I checked, the Bible told me I was part of a royal priesthood. Last time I checked, the Bible told me I was part of a chosen generation. Last time I checked, the Bible told me weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Last time I checked, he shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. Last time I checked, all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. But I ought to have a witness in here today. They can say, sometimes I ain't got to open my Bible. But the last time I was broke, he paid my bills. The last time I was sick, he healed my body. The last time I didn't know what I was going to do, he stepped right in. Is there anybody in here that can help me preach to your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is no secret of what God can do, what he's done for others. He'll do the same thing for you. Tell somebody, stand on his promises. I, I'm done. I'm done. But what do you do when stressful seasons come? Number one, you got to resist arrogance. Number two, you got to rely on the Almighty. Number three, you got to resist the adversary. Can I give you number four? You got to receive his assurances. Verse 10 through 11, Peter sprinkles this, this phrase, Deacon McMahon. He says, the God of all grace. <laughs> Sometimes you ought to learn how to shout just from reading the Bible. Sometimes you ought to just read the Bible and certain things ought to just make you shout because you ought to have a flashback. Peter says, the God of all grace. He, he says, God will give us godly favor when you stand on his word. Can I come a little closer? He, he, he throws out a disclaimer here because some of these social media prophets tell you that when you come to God, you won't have no trouble. Every day is going to be a bed of roses and your bank account ain't going to never fall under $10,000. I'm, I'm still waiting on it. And, 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 and church folk who I know got better sense, they'll be liking it, sharing it. I'll be like, Lord have mercy. This don't even sound, this ain't theologically sound. But that's for another day. Look what he says. You will suffer. Yes, you will go through. But Peter says God has the scope on the severity of our trials. God won't allow our trials to overtake us. Down where I used to pass in Clay County, they would say like this, trouble don't last. Always. And I ought to be somebody here that said, I'm glad that I serve a God. That if I stand on his promises, he's now obligated <laughs> to come and see about me. He says, the God of all grace. That means that God, if I do what God told me to do, and if I stand like God told me to stand, that God's grace will cover me and his grace will keep me. I'm glad today, great thing, that we serve a God that will reward our faithfulness. I'm glad that I serve a God that if I stand long enough, that God will take care of us. Peter says, but then to him be the glory, dominion forever and ever. Peter says, don't act like when you get out of the situation, Sister Beverly, don't act like you got yourself out. Peter says, you better give praise to the one who got you out. Do I have a witness in here? Because some folk, as soon as God delivered them, they forget about God. And they saw God, God, if you get me out of this, you ain't ever got to worry about me again. And they forgot about God. But don't be somebody who, who don't tell God, thank you for getting you out of stuff. Some stuff we got ourselves in 
And we ought to tell God, thank you for getting us out of it. I'm in my seat. But how am I going to close this? Well, since we're getting to know each other, I've been telling you some of the shows I like to watch. I grew up around my grandparents and great-grandparents. And when I don't have a honey-do list or if I don't have something due on a Saturday, I like to sit still and watch westerns. Gunsmoke. Bonanza. The Rifleman. High Chaparral. Big Valley. I like to watch anything John Wayne in. Sons of Katie Elder. El Dorado. Big Jake. What I've come to understand, Sister Doc, is that every Western got to have a good fight. Ain't no good Western until bullets start flying. Smoke is in the air. Dust star flaring. There has to be a stressful moment. And I come to tell us that when you're watching it, if you notice, as they're shooting the good versus the bad, going back and forth, eventually their target gets a little further than they can get to them. And if they got a partner, they turn around and they say, cover me. That means I'm trying to get a little closer. And as I get closer, there may be a gun or a bullet that I don't see that I need you to cover me. Have a good day, Spray is thankful. But when you go home tonight, I need you to fall on your knees and ask the Lord to cover you. Cover your family. Cover your marriage. And cover your children. Cover your church. Cover you uh, with the grace of God. Jesus, be a fence all around me every day. I want you to protect me as I travel along the way. Is there anybody here that can ask the Lord to cover you, cover your family, cover your mind, cover your healing, cover your breakthrough? Is there anybody here that can give God praise in advance? And say thank you for where you brought me. Thank you for where you're taking me. Because can't nobody do me like Jesus. Yes. Yes. Ah.